here is my review for The Legend of Korra Season 3, Episode 8, titled The Terror Within. The Terror Within! The Terror Within! We only get one episode this week, and there's a reason why there's only one episode this week, and I'll get into all that at the end of this review. So, yeah. Let's just jump into the review. So Korra's looking good with the metal bending, and Bolin still can't do metal bending. And that's kind of interesting, because, I mean... What's really happening here? It just it doesn't seem like he's really getting taught to, to to metal bend. Like no one's really giving him all the information that he needs to really try to metal bend here. I mean, Cora all, all she needed was that little bit of advice. And you know, Cora she's just great at all all types of bending at this point. I mean, she's she never really had any struggle with 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 bending in the first place. I mean, the only time she actually struggled was with air. So every other like bending really came naturally to her. So seeing her metal bend on the way she is is not surprising. But Lynn, on the other hand, is just like. You're gonna have to do more than that. You have to get hands on with him. You're actually gonna have to teach him something, not put him in a sparring match. And, and you think all of a sudden he's gonna learn it. So it's just kind of weird to me. That's why I'm saying like he's. Like, I don't know if he's ever gonna learn it at this point. Hopefully he'll learn it soon because I would love to see him do some metal bending. God dang. And it doesn't help that he keeps freaking doubting himself too. He just keeps thinking like, oh, it's just like one to one hundred. Like I just can't do it. Oh, it's just gonna take so much time. Like just, just stop being so negative. And if you see a positive outlook on things, you might actually be able to do it. So. Come on, man. And so after that, there's a farewell dinner for Opal. Because Opal is going to the air temple to learn air bending, of course, and all that stuff. So, you know, they had to do a farewell party. And after she leaves, after she leaves, Zaheer and the gang got into Metal City. The moment they actually got into Metal City, they quickly go and capture Korra. Mako and Bolin, seeing that Korra got captured, they go after them, and that's when a big old fight ensues. And I just freaking, I love this, I love this. It was a big just brawl because all the other metal vendors came in and they couldn't, they had to, they had to fight everybody basically because they all, they got noticed and everything. So it was just, oh, it was, it was so good. It was so good to see all that. And everybody's just going in and putting in that work, putting in that work. One thing to note though, Combustion Woman, this girl can shoot at an angle. She, she don't have to just shoot straight ahead. Like the regular Combustion Man, he, he can just only shoot straight ahead from what he's seen. She can shoot from an angle like, and he just goes all the way around and stuff, do, do circles and stuff. I'm like, what's, what is this? What the heck? And so as the battle continues, they try to trap here in the game, but of course that doesn't work because you see this like epic freaking lava bend in here and he just melts the metal away. Like, get that crap out of here and, and all that and animation and just like, ah. Ah. The epic battle continues, Bolin hits Combustion Woman with a pebble on the top of her head where, you know, her combustion power is at to stop her from attacking and so that uh, Lin and Sue can get Korra back, which they do. I'm going to just say this right now, they're making Bolin similar to Susaka here. I mean, I mean, it's quite apparent that that's what they're doing. He's like the funny man in the group and this and that and the other thing, but then he has to like a certain similar moment like, like with uh, so Sokka did with, her boomer, with his boomerang when he threw it and then he hit Combustion Man in the head and, you know. Like, well, that blew him up and pretty much killed him. But, I mean, you know what I mean? It's, he has to freaking precisely hit her right in the head and everything like that. It's just, it's, it's a similar situation. And it just kind of further proves that he's like the Sokka of the game of team, this new Team Avatar. So, just want to throw it out there. But I'm sure we all already knew this anyway. So, I was like, you know, this is a, it's a moot point. And so, is it here in the game? They escape. They just gone with the wind. And so, after that encounter, they're thinking someone helped. Zaheer and the gang get in and so they question all the guards and they found one who could have helped Zaheer in the gang But in the end it could also be the old man uh, I weigh himself that actually helped them and this is, this, is, this is so funny because That's the thing I weigh it all depends on what he thinks I mean yeah, he has that ability to to, to know if you're lying or not, but he's the only one and if, you, if, you, if you're the person that has that ability and you're only in the, in the whole metal city having that ability and they rely solely on you, whether or not it's someone's telling the truth or not, you can, you, one, you can be corrupt as I don't know what and just easily say, oh, the person's lying. You don't have to, you don't have to have to tell the truth yourself. Like, how will they know? They'll, they have to completely trust you uh, in your instincts and what you're saying. So he's a perfect candidate to actually be corrupt and, and do things the way, the way things are because Iowa is the person that did help Zaheer and the gang get inside and how he did it was at his place if you move the shelf over we see that there's like a secret passageway so that's where that's where they came in from and so Korra and the gang find the secret passageway and then Iowa comes in and Iowa's like what's happening why are you in my place what's going on so yeah Iowa did it Iowa tries to run away he ends up like putting up this metal wall and so Korra has to try to open up the wall and everything once once you open up the wall what's on the other side it was not Iowa in the other side 
It was a bomb. Boom. Luckily, you know, Korg just used their air bending to actually redirect all the explosion elsewhere and everything. Because, you know, you see how air bending can just block explosions. So, you know, that was nice. Nice move. Nice move. And so, Sue, after getting the information, she just heard off of this the fact that Ai Wei was the one that helps the hero in the game actually get in. You know, she considered him as family and everything. And for her to just betray everybody like this, was, it's, it's really hurting her. And so, Korra wants to actually go after Ai Wei so she can capture him and also to see if they can find the in the game as well and everything. But, of course, Lin is like, no, you don't need to do that. We need to get back to Republic City where I can protect you and everything. And so, uh, Sue jumps in, in between this and she's like, no, 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 L listen to Lin. Just, just go sit down, Avatar. You don't need to do, go do anything or anything like that. But that was all a front because, actually, once the whole argument was over and they were, like, sitting in the room, Sue comes in and is like, here's a key. If you're, uh... If your polar bear dog can actually find Ai Wei, then this is the scent that you need, and go get him, because I want answers. Because basically, at the end of the day, she wants a freaking answer. She wants to know why the heck you're doing this in the first place. So, you know, like, again, she's, she's heard about this, and I'm pretty sure she's about to go ham on people. The episode ends off with uh, Korra, you know, going out there and going to go find Ai Wei. One thing I gotta say when it comes to the battle that happened with the the Gang and everybody, it took everybody there just to stop the the Gang. It took that many people just to stop them. It's kind of funny, too, when, uh... Zaheer couldn't actually capture Korra because Zaheer's like, oh, we failed. It's like, it, it, it's so funny. And so the last thing I want to talk about with The Legend of Korra this week is the fact that we only got one episode. The reason why we only got one episode this week is because the last five episodes of Legend of Korra is only going to be online. It's not going to be on television. And the reason why it's not going to be on television is, is the fact that it didn't get enough views. And, I mean... The thing is, it's not like it was getting like really, really low views or anything like that, but I'm guessing the standard uh, of views that they get, maybe it's like over 2 million? Maybe? I mean, I'm not really sure because I looked up some stuff and I see like Sanji and Craig can get like 3.8 million and then like iCarly and stuff can get like 2 million and same thing with Spongebob can get about 2 million and stuff. But The Legend of Korra only, only ever breaks about a million or so. So it's like it's, maybe it's not enough views that they need, which is why they, they want to take it away, you know? Not to mention there's such a big fuss when it comes to online. People stream it. People um, are pirating it and, and downloading it and, and watching it online more so than they are watching it at home on TV, you know? So, I mean, that's one of the things why it's, it's hitting them. And the funny thing is they have... They have more viewing online than it is actually on TV, from what the, from what I'm hearing, anyways. So this that's the reason why they decided to just go online altogether. Because the rest of the episodes, if you guys don't know, the rest of the episodes are gonna be on Nick.com. So you can still you're still gonna be able to watch them. It's, it's not it's gonna, it's gonna go away. It's gonna be on Nick, and you can watch the rest of the episodes there. So hopefully it can get more views and and show that people are maybe really are. Just, they're just transferring to online. They don't really care about watching TV. Maybe they got other things they got to do at the time, so they can't watch the series and stuff. I mean, there's always a lot of variables when it comes to television stuff. Like for, I, for myself, when I do these reviews, I do watch it on TV. I watch it on TV. I take down all my notes. Like I have my notes right here, actually, which is why I usually turn. You just probably, if you look at me on my camera and everything, I'm always looking to the side a little bit. I'm looking at notes because I wrote down all my notes, and I write, I write down my notes while I'm actually watching the episode itself. So. You know, I actually watch it on TV because I want to give that impression. I want to give it views, but I mean, I'm only one person, so I can only do so much. So, I mean, it's it's un it's unfortunate that it's not going to be on TV anymore, but at the same time, th it's not necessarily a bad thing. Again, everything, all types of media at this point is starting to try to transfer to, uh, you know, to online at this point. So it's not like it's shocking. It shouldn't shock you too much. It's just the way they went about it was kind of kind of messed up and kind of wrong because not even the creators knew exactly that this was going to happen right now. You know, they didn't know in mid-season that they're going to go online all of a sudden. They had plans to maybe do some stuff online because of how things are, are changing. You know, times are changing, you know, ever-changing, you know. It's just it's a theme. It's still a theme. Things keep changing. But, uh, no, it's just like... You know, they didn't know. It's just, just kind of weird how Nick handled the whole situation. Like, the season actually wasn't even supposed to come out at this time. It was supposed to come out um, when it was supposed to the San Diego Comic-Con. It was supposed to make an announcement there, and that's when it's supposed to start coming out and everything. We get releases and all that. But because it got leaked, they decided to just push it up and everything. So they're kind of like almost, you know, doing the bidding of, of these pirators, you know? Like, the pirators got the stuff out, so it made the, uh, uh, the, the show come out even quicker and everything like that. So... You know, it's just, again, it's just, it's a little unfortunate that it's not going to be on TV anymore, but, again, maybe this is a good sign, maybe they'll actually get more views, maybe 
you know, because maybe because we get more views, we'll get you more Legend of Korra or even some other kind of spinoff or something. You know, maybe was, Legend of Korra might, or the, the Avatar series altogether can still probably be around or something. But we'll, we'll have to see. I just believe that the next season two we're probably just going to be straight online at this at this point in time. And again, let's just hope. Let's just watch. Let's just keep watching. All right, and and support the series the best you can. But uh, that's what's going on. That's why we only had one episode. So. Yeah, now you guys know. If you, if you didn't know, then yeah. But what are your guys' thoughts on the whole change, actually? I'm very curious what you guys think about it. I don't think it's a bad thing, but I'm curious what you guys think. And what do you guys think about this episode as well? Leave it all in the comment section below. Like and like this review. And subscribe to my channel if you want to see some more Legend Core reviews from me. So yeah, it's been the Breakmaster. And until then, people, break out.